Hello, welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Emily Rutherford Liska, Executive Director of the Jacksonville Historical Society. This is a show that's produced by the Jacksonville Historical Society and University of North Florida. And here today with me is Taryn Rodriguez Bodie, Associate Director of the Jacksonville Historical Society. And I want to welcome you, Taryn. Hello. Thank you so much. And you wear more than one hat at the Jacksonville Historical yes, Society. Yes, I do. Uh, and we all do, <laughs> and you particularly. Not only are you Associate Director, you also are Director of the Archival Repository, mm -hmm. and I would argue the most important uh, activity of the Jacksonville Historical Society. We collect the history of Jacksonville, Florida, in all formats, anything imaginable, paper, photographs, images, you name it, diaries, journals, uh, movie, film, you, on and on and on. And today, you've actually brought some photographs and some objects mm -hmm. with you to show people. And I should say at the start, we wouldn't have any of these objects at the Jacksonville Historical Society unless people kindly donated them to us. And uh, so we'll start there. And uh, first, if you want to add anything to the description of what okay. we do at the repository. Well, as you mentioned, um, the most important facet of the Jacksonville Historical Society is to collect the history of Duval County. And we have been doing that since 1929. And as you say, we don't have an acquisition budget. So uh, we depend on people donating. And we are fortunate enough to have people coming to our doors every single day with different donations. And when you asked me to be in the show to get some treasures out of our archives and our artifacts, I asked the staff what was their favorite treasures. I didn't yes. know how. You determined I did. this today. I actually did. Um, and I was uh, very subjective because I also brought my favorite treasure in the archives. Oh, but I'm going okay. to start with the one that everyone seems to love, which is the Kellogg album. And the Kellogg album um, is an album collected by Edward Kellogg. And what Mr. Kellogg did, he took a trip down St. John's River in the 1870s, actually in the late 1870s. And it seems that he started here in Jacksonville, and um, his trip was not only for pleasure, he had a curiosity shop in downtown Jacksonville on Bay Street, and he took photos of many things, and he would reproduce the photos and sell them in the, in the curiosity shop. And, and may I interrupt you to say something? Yes. The word curiosity shop is today synonymous with souvenir shop. Yeah, a souvenir or shop. Or gift shop. Yeah, uh, definitely, a souvenir. And what is very interesting is that so many of the iconic photographs of Florida in the 1870s were taken by Mr. Kellogg. And of course, I have a few of them that which are um, some of my favorite ones. Um, I am, again, very subjective. Um, I love the ones of downtown Jacksonville, and downtown Jacksonville in the 1870s was not anything like it is today. It was actually very rural looking, um, sand streets, lots of magnolias and um, pine trees. And we have some wonderful photos of uh, Noonan Street and Forsyth, Brooklyn, which of course has become um, there's a renaissance going on in Brooklyn right now. I think, uh, as you've already pointed out, so striking about these images, it looks like much of downtown Jacksonville, as we recognize today, is a rural country lane. It was, yes. it was, and that was very, um, it's very fascinating to look at these images. And as you say, we keep very detailed records of our provenance of our items, and um, we are open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, and we are on Palmetto Street at 314 Palmetto, just in case people don't know how to get to us. But um, some of the Kellogg album has um, photos not only of Jacksonville, but other places in Florida. As I said, Mr. Kellogg went down the St. John's River. He went to St. Augustine. He went to Palatka. But in St. Augustine, we have very interesting photos of the Apache Indians that were in prison at the Castillo de San Marcos in the 1879s. And there's wonderful photos of that imprisonment, which has become very important in the history of the Native Americans and the, the Trail of Tears. And as I understand, these are rare photos. You're just not going to find them out there anywhere. No, and these are original photos. So Mr. Kellogg took the photos himself. So this is what makes it so special. And there's at least 20 or 25 of these photos. And of course, it gives you a glimpse of life in Northeast Florida. Another item I would like to share with our viewers is the Worley Cup. 
And of course, the Whirly Cup is my favorite item in uh -huh. the whole archives. Probably because the Whirly Cup was the first item that I accessioned when I arrived at the Jacksonville Historical Society a year ago. And it celebrates the opening of Atlantic Boulevard. And Atlantic Boulevard opened in 1910 as the first highway in Florida. This highway uh, was a brick road. And can you imagine going from downtown Jacksonville to the beach? It will take you probably a couple of hours in one of those old fashioned cars. And there was such a huge celebration on that day that there were races on the beach because one of the things that people did at the beach was not only go bathing and swimming, they went um, sports racing, so they car racing, and motorcycle racing, and even airplane racing. But the Worley uh, Trophy, which is right here, was given to Mr. Worley. Um, he won one of the races in 1910 when the Atlantic Boulevard opened. And I just absolutely love the, the, um, the trophy. His granddaughter, which is today a sister of St. Joseph, gave us the uh, trophy. So we are very um, happy about that. Another interesting item that we have in the, in the collection are many, many, many postcards. And here right now we have a, poster, a postcard from 1906 of the Ostrich Farm, which of course was on Talleyrand Avenue. And um, ostriches came into Jacksonville in the 1880s, um, and there were ostrich races, and carriages were pulled by um, or, um, ostriches. But also, ostriches' feathers were very coveted by ladies for their hats. And an ostrich feather in 1890 will cost up to $40, which is $800 today, just for one feather. Oh my, I, I had no idea. <laughs> yes. Well, now that you're saying that, we only have about a minute and oh. a half left. And so you gave us a perfect entree just to let people know that uh, we will be having, in, in a little bit of distant yes. future, we have exhibits all the time. And so we have a hat exhibit coming up. Yes, and we are collecting hats. And please do come and drop your hat that has to go with Jacksonville. We're going to go call the exhibit Hats Off to Jacksonville. And we are collecting hats that have to do with Jacksonville, They're made in Jacksonville, wore in Jacksonville, or have any connection with Jacks. I want to thank you for being here, Jim Rodriguez so Bodie. And I want to thank University of North Florida for bringing history to the North Florida area. And for now, we're history. Bye bye now. <laughs>